Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will continue with the SQL series. In the previous two videos, we have covered the fundamentals of SQL and we wrote SQL queries to answer business questions. We will continue on learning SQL with practical examples. We will focus on few key business aspects. For example, we want to know the customer buying habits. So we will find out how many customers have repeat purchases and we will define new versus returning customer flag. We'll figure out what is our user repeat rate. Number three, on average, how many orders do we receive per day? And last, what is our average daily sales? We will answer these analytics question using our favorite language, SQL. So let's begin. I have SQL Server Management Studio open and we will use AdventureWorks to carry out the exercises. Let's go over the first question. We are asked to figure out how many customers have made more than one purchase, plus how many customers have made only one purchase. We can tackle this in one shot if we create a column for new versus returning customers. Let's go ahead and code the solution. This is a multi-step process, so we can either use a subquery or a common table expression. Let's go ahead and define these first. Common table expression, or CT as it is commonly referred to, specifies a temporary named result set. CTE is derived from a simple query and it is defined within the scope of a single select statement. The example on screen shows the total number of sales order per year for each sales representative at AdventureWorks. So we define the CTE with the keyword with, then we give the CTE a name, in this case we are calling it sales CTE, followed by the as keyword. After the as, we have parentheses, and within the parentheses, we have the body of the CTE. This is where we define the select query that produces the result set for the CTE. After the parentheses, we have a select statement, and here we are using the sales CTE column uh, from above to perform further calculations. Okay, next is the subquery. A subquery is a query that is nested inside a select statement. A subquery is also called an inner query or inner select, while the statement containing a subquery is called an outer query or outer select. So we can see here that we have an outer select in the example on the screen, and we have within the parentheses, we have another select query, and uh, this will be the subquery uh, nested within an outer select. We can use either one to solve problems depending on the comfort level and our needs. Most people prefer CTEs as it follows the logical order from top down. We will use combination of both to solve the problems that we have discussed. So let's begin with the keyword with and define the name of the CTE. I'll call the CTE customers and after the name we can provide column list if we choose to but that is optional so I'll go ahead and skip it. In the CTE body, we will select the customer key. Next, we will make use of a window function called row number. Row number assigns a sequential integer to each row within the partition of a result. The row number starts with one for a first row in each partition. The partition by clause divides the result set into a group for each customer. We select this data from FAC Internet Sales table. This gives us the customer key and a group result set for each customer. Next, we create another CD where we select customer key where row num column is greater than one. This gives us the customer who have multiple purchases. Similarly, if we set the filter on row number column to one, this gives us all customers. Now we can derive new versus returning customer. To create a new flag, we will use the case statement if you recall it from the previous session. In the case statement, we check if the customer key from the repeat buyer CTE is not null, then we set the flag to repeat, meaning this is a returning customer. Instead of doing another comparison, we can simply use the else clause, and in the else, we set the flag to new, meaning this is a new customer. We end the case statement with end keyword and give it a name, repeat underscore new. Next, we do a count and in the parentheses, we use the asterisk. If you use an asterisk, count calculates the total number of records, including those that contains null. 
count asterisk is considerably faster than count column. Since we are using an aggregate function, we'll use the case statement in the group by clause. Group by clause cannot have aliases, so we will drop the as keyword and the column alias. Let's execute the query and see how many new and returning customers we have. For this query, we have 2,492 new customers and 15,992 returning customers. We can double check this number against dim customer dimension table. So we'll do a count star from this table and the total number of rows returned from this table should equal to 2,492 and 15,992. Let's go ahead and add these two numbers up using a select and see if they equal to our total number of customers in the dim customer table. Okay, the totals, they tally up, so this looks good. Our new customer and repeat customer calculation matches what's in the system. Next, we want to know the customer repeat rate, meaning how many of the existing customer make repeat purchases. We have the number of customer that made repeat purchases, which is 15,992. All we need is the total number of customer to perform this calculation. I can add another CTE, but I'll use a subquery to perform this. So from the customer CTE, we need to get the distinct customer key and it will give us the total number of customers. I'll add parentheses after the number of customer column and inside I'll write a select statement. We'll call the count function and inside the count call the distinct and the column we'll perform the distinct on is the customer key. We are selecting this from the customer CTE. I'll call this column as total customer Let's go ahead and run this to make sure it gives us the correct number. Okay, our total customer equals to 18,484. This looks good. In order to get the repeat rate, we need to divide the repeat customer by the total number of customers. Let's go ahead and perform that. So we are going to divide the count asterisk by this new column. Once we execute the query, we get a zero. This means we will need to cast these two columns to decimal so we get numbers below zero. We'll put a cast function around the count and we are going to convert this as decimal 18 comma two and we'll do the same to the total number of customers. Let's go ahead and run our query again. Now we get the decimal below zeros. Okay, this looks good. Let's go ahead and convert this number to decimal with two decimal places. We are going to use the format function. So we will wrap the whole calculation in the format function and we want the outcome as percent. So we will pass the P in the codes. Let's run the query and we get the repeat rate in percentage. We have a great customer repeat rate, which is 86%. Meaning out of 100 customer, we have 86 customer that return and make a repeat purchase. This is a great conversion rate. Next item on the agenda is to check how many orders we receive on daily basis. And based on these orders, what's the daily average sales? We can obtain both of these measures from the fact internet sales table. We will define a CTE, average sales per day, and inside the body, we select the order date column, and we'll do a distinct count on sales order number to get the order count. Let's go ahead and also sum the sales amount. This will give us the average daily sales. And uh, since we are using the aggregate function, we'll have to use the group by, and uh, we are going to supply the order date column in the group by clause. In the select following the CTE, uh, we simply apply the average function on the sales column, and we'll do the same thing for the order count. Let's go ahead and run our query to get the daily averages. This gives us the daily uh, sales average of $26,119. And we have a daily average order of 24. So there you have it. This is our daily sales and we have a daily order count as well. I think this is a good stopping point. I will conclude this session here. We will carry on from here in the next session. Until then, like, share and subscribe, take care and I'll see you in the next video.